Today's integral has a really interesting structure. It's the integral from 0 to infinity of the square of the logarithm of e to the x plus 1 divided by e to the x minus 1. And the solution development does contain a couple of really nice tricks. And the final result is just beautiful. It's a very satisfying result. So where exactly do we start here? The argument is e to the x plus 1 divided by e to the x minus 1. So I might as well modify that just a little bit by expanding the argument using e to the negative x. So I have the integral from 0 to infinity of log square e to the x plus 1 times e to the negative x divided by e to the x minus 1 times e to the negative x dx. So now we have the integral from 0 to infinity of log square 1 plus e to the negative x divided by 1 minus e to the negative x integration with respect to x. Now we can invoke a really nice substitution here. That is, we're going to let e to the negative x equal u. Now this implies that negative e to the negative x dx equals du. And this further implies that dx equals negative 1 by e to the negative x du. But we know exactly what e to the negative x is, right? We know that is u. So we have negative 1 by u du. That's our new differential element. So returning to the case of our integral, we have i equal to the integral from where to where. Now as x approaches 0, we have u approaching 1. And as x approaches infinity, we have u approaching 0. So we now have the integral from 1 to 0, a negative sign because of the differential element. And we have log square 1 plus u divided by 1 minus u times 1 by u du. Now I can get rid of the negative sign if I just switch up the limits of the the limits of integration. So that's one thing taken care of. And we can reciprocate the argument of the logarithm and then introduce a negative sign, but the square will take care of that negative sign. So this implies that i equals the integral from 0 to 1 of log square 1 minus u divided by 1 plus u, 1 by u du. Now for a really interesting substitution. We're going we're gonna to invoke the very aggressive Weierstrass substitution in the form first used by Euler, if I remember correctly. So, yeah, it's Euler basically starting off pretty much everything in integral calculus. Anyway, so the substitution I'm going to invoke here is going to be letting 1 minus u divided by 1 plus u equal z. And the really cool thing about the substitution is that the function defined here is a self-inverse. That means we can switch up the roles of u and z. So this implies that u equals 1 minus z divided by 1 plus z. And that helps us with the differential element. So differentiating, we have du equal to 1 plus z times negative 1 minus 1 minus z times 1 divided by 1 plus z squared. And now we have negative 1 minus z. I'm just going to write this out in case I, just so that I don't miss anything. Okay, so we do have some cancellation. Oh, I forgot the differential element on the right-hand side. Terribly sorry about that. So we have negative 2 dz divided by 1 plus z squared. That's our new differential element. Now what about the limits of integration? We see that as u tends to 1, uh, as u tends to 0, we have z approaching 1. And as u approaches 1, we have z tending to 0. OK, cool. So there's a switcheroo of the limits happening over here. And we can now return to the integration problem as i being equal to the integral from 1 to 0 now. Of what exactly do we have? Well, we have log square z, quite convenient. And this reciprocal of u over here would 
be, according to this function, 1 plus z divided by 1 minus z. And for the differential element, we have a negative 2 that I'm going to write out there. Cool. And we have dz divided by 1 plus z squared. Immediately, we see some nice cancellation. And once again, switching up the limits, we have i equal to twice the integral from 0 to 1 of log square z times the reciprocal of 1 minus z squared integration with respect to z. Okay, cool. And now what? Well, the integral we have is much simpler than the integral we started with, thanks to our wild substitution. So we have an interval stretching from 0 to 1. So we might as well invoke the geometric series expansion. We know that we can expand the reciprocal of 1 minus x as the sum over the non-negative integers k of x to the k, provided that the absolute value of x is less than 1, which is valid for z squared here. So that means 1 by 1 minus z squared equals the sum over k of z to the 2k. So this implies that i equals twice the integral from 0 to 1 of log square z times the sum over k of z to the 2k dz. And now this logarithm term is independent of the index variable k, so we might as well take it inside the summation operator, and we have twice the integral from 0 to 1 of the sum over k of z to the 2k times log square z dz. So now we switch up the order of integration and the summation operators, and we have a nice simple integral structure to deal with. We have twice the sum over k of the integrals from 0 to 1 of z to the 2k times log square z dz. And this is a case of a very nice generalized integration result that I have derived on my Instagram. So yeah, do drop me a follow over there, and that would be a very nice time to like and subscribe the video. You may ask why? Well, I do cool integrals. And this integral was very cool. The solution development is looking good so far. So yeah, there are lots of reasons, and it's going to get even better towards the end. So yeah, lots of reasons, and you'll find lots of more reasons when you, you know, watch more videos. So yeah, that would be cool. And I've also started some quantum mechanics content as well. So do check that out if that's your thing. And even if it's not, well, it's quantum mechanics, so it's cool. So you might as well make it your thing. Anyway, we have this integral sorting out to what exactly? We have twice the sum over k of negative 1 to whatever the z variable is raised to, so that's 2k, times gamma of whatever the logarithm is raised to plus 1, divided by whatever the z variable is raised to plus 1 to whatever the log is raised to plus 1. You get the idea. So negative 1 to the 2k is, well, 1. Gamma 3 is 2 factorial, which is 2. And wait, uh, I think this should be, yeah, it's negative 1 to whatever the logarithm is raised to. It would have been the same thing even if I got it wrong this time, but that's not always the case. Anyway, so we have 1, and gamma 3 is 2 factorial, which is 2, so that's a 4 times the sum over the non-negative integers of 1 by 2k plus 1 cubed, which is related to a very nice constant, one of our favorite constants to come across while solving integral problems. And how exactly do I bring about that constant? Well, let me show you something. We have the sum over the non-negative integers n of 1 by n cubed. Now, this could be separated into even versus odd values of n. So first, we'll let n be an even number. So we have the sum over n start a uh, sum over k starting at zero of one by n being equal to two times k. So that's eight k cubed, correct? Plus 
the sum over n, again starting at 0, wait, k starting at 0, terribly sorry about that, of 1 by 2k plus 1 cubed, which is exactly the sum that we need. However, this sum here and this sum here are exactly the same thing, right? This here is Apri's constant, and this here is 1 eighth of Apri's constant. So this implies that the sum over k, the sum over k of 1 by 2k plus 1 cubed equals 7 eighths of Apri's constant. So finally, we have our target integral i being equal to, quite nicely, 7 halves of Apri's constant, which is pretty cool indeed. I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. Thank you. See you next time.